Hey, go here with the team video. Today we will look at every 5 star DPS in the game and I will give 2 to 3 teams for each of them. One expensive team, one mid range team, and then a final cheap full 4 star team. Your vision is a bit different considering the AOE focus and the fact that most teams will probably just use Herta, so I didn't decide to include ones for that mode. The max investment team will be using statistics from Memory of Chaos clears, theory crafting opinions including my own, as well as some of my simulations on their damage but they won't necessarily be the best best team you can get as it will always depend on enemies and investment. I will also be explaining the teams a bit and why they synergize together so well. So like and consider subscribing if you enjoyed this video. Let me know below your favorite team to use and let's begin. Right off the bat we have the wonderful Himiko. Himiko is a crit DPS but also wants enemies to have their weakness broken for her talent follow up and she gains a very small benefit from attacking burned enemies. With that being said, her idol team will be Ruan Mei for their weakness break efficiency and massive buffs, alongside Topaz for the dual DPS core. Topaz offers tons of single target damage to compensate for Himiko's lack of said damage, and they are both heavily boosted by Ruan Mei, the premier dual DPS buffer. If you need to sustain, I'd go Luwacha with multiplication to generate as many skill points as possible, but if you're going skill point neutral on Topaz, then Huo would be my pick. If you're a chad like Eo, then you can even run Asta on the fourth slot. For a mid-range investment team, you can swap Ruan Mei for Asta instead, still going for that dual DPS boosting and allowing both Himiko and Topaz to run attack percent boots just fine. Asta's fire damage percent bonus trace on top further complements the fiery duo. For a cheap Himiko team, I would replace Topaz with Tingyun or Gwenaifen. Tingyun's buffs are always going to be insane for an attack percent DPS, but Gwenaifen's damage boosting capabilities are nice too, and she will provide more breaks for Himiko versus fire weak, and she will also benefit greatly from Asta. Our favorite Grandpa Welt is next. He's a crit DPS that also needs some effect hit rate in stats, doing decent damage on top of some crazy enemy turn manipulation. For a hardcore team, my Welt enthusiast friend NL Rem likes Welt, Ronya, Ruame, and Pella. Welt and Ruame at high investment should generally shred Memory of Chaos before sustaining becomes an issue. Ronya's heavy action advanced power combined with Ruame's aura based buffs means Welt's damage is going to be insane on those high amount of actions he will now be getting. Ella is there as an SP generator and damage amplifier if you don't need the sustain, but a watcher works in her place if you do. Ronya would ideally be 134 speed just behind Welt if you have her E1S1, but 160 speed Ronya with attack percent boots Welt, going basic skill rotation, is better for skill point economy. For a less unhinged team, you'd definitely go for a sustain, and you'd replace Ronya with Ting Yun, who is also a very nice support for Welt. A 3 turn ult build enables many high damaging ults from Welt, which again helps with sustain and her attack percent boost and benediction procs are always juicy. For a cheap team, Yukong Tingyun Welt is pretty nice if you can tune Yukong correctly. Tingyun E1 buffs his speed after he ults, so you want Yukong to be faster than that speed. I've written two possible action orders in the team graphic. If you hate speed tuning, maybe just use Hanya instead. Yan King is another standard banner 5 star DPS and again, he is a crit DPS. He gives himself some awesome crit buffs and has nice nuke damage, with the caveat of having most of his damage tied to not taking damage himself. For an ideal Yanqing team, you'd go Ruan Mei, Ting Yun, and Japard. Ruan Mei is Ruan Mei as always, but her delays will help out in preventing the loss of his Soul Steel Sync passive, and she can provide a Panaconi bonus. Ting Yun's extra benediction procs leads to a ton of damage, and Yanqing's high ultimate cost desperately wants her in the team. Ruan Mei can be replaced with Pella for a cheaper team, and her E4 and Defense Shred allow for nice enemy modified debuffs that multiply his damage, rather than just more crit when he already gets a ton. For a final cheap team, you can replace Japard with March 7th or Fire MC. Fire MC can in fact be used despite the weak shields, since her taunt can persuade enemies to ignore Yan Qing completely. Clara is our final standard banner 5 star DPS, and I'm not going to repeat the crit DPS bit. She stays at around her base speed unless you're a bit cheeky, doing most of her damage from her counterattacks when enemies hit her, instead of slapping them on her own turn, but she does that too. For an amazing dual DPS setup, you can go for Clara, Topaz, Tingyun, and Huohuo. Tingyun can spam every buff onto Topaz or Clara, or a mix of both, depending on the content. If Tingyun ults Topaz, then Huohuo's energy generation can allow Clara to still have amazing uptime. Topaz, as always, is going to be a nice bonus to follow up units, and Clara's ultimate blast counters makes proof of death targeting not as much of a problem. For a mid range team, you can drop Topaz for a Yukong, putting her behind your Tingyun and sustain, and her speed tuning is super easy here since Clara is always going to be slowest in your team. Yukong's buffs are massive and will stay during enemy attacks, meaning Clara's many, many counter attacks 
can maximize the use of her giant crit and attack percent boosts. For the cheapest team you can go, Hua can be replaced by Lynx, which will allow for some benefits in aggro over the sustained power and energy generation. Our very first limited DPS was Zela right at the start of 1.0. An amazing and expensive team is the fake Mono Quantum with Silverwolf, Bronya, and Fu Xuan. Silverwolf's many damage amping debuffs is already nice, and Zela's single target damage focus means the lack of AoE debuffs is not that annoying. Bronya is great since her buffs can stay on through Resurgence, and her ult can even be extended with it. And more actions when Zela is already taking 50 turns is always nice. It is hard to speed tune the two though because of Zela's advances and speed increases, and skill point consumption may be difficult too. We will be replacing Bronya with Sparkle if you end up pulling her. This will also allow Zela to be against Quantum Weak for every single enemy in the game thanks to Silverwolf's now guaranteed weakness implant. A cheaper team would see us replacing Silverwolf or Bronya with Ting Yun. If you replace Silver Wolf, you'd have to fight Quantum Weak. If you replace Bronya, you can still fight Lightning Weak and still implant Quantum 100% of the time. We can also replace Fushuan with Lynx without ruining the implant chances or Bailu for a dual element team. If you go full full star, that would see us going Tingyun, Pella, and Lynx. Pella's Death Scent Shred synergizes with the Quantum Set's Death Ignore, and Pella's Skill Point Generation means Zilla can easily spam skill, or Lynx can be allowed to sustain better. King Yuan dropped in the second half of 1.0 with some very quirky kit shenanigans, with his Lightning Lord having its own speed, own turn, and thus changing how we buff and use our DPS unit. For a premier dual DPS team, you can go for Topaz, Ruan Mei, and then Fu Xuan. Fu Xuan's crowd control prevention is much nicer than Huo Huo or Luocha's cleanse after the CC already happened. Topaz will allow that Lightning Lord to nuke boss HP bars even more so, and Ruan Mei is there for the dual DPS buffing. For a cheap team and a Jing Yuan hyper carry focused one, Ting Yun and Ruan Mei, in my experience, are his best support duo. Ting Yun offers so many benefits that would extend this video by a minute. For one example, is her ult cycling is very important for his Lightning Lord's power. As for Ruan Mei, her buffs will stick onto Jing Yuan after his turn, unlike Bronya pre E6, meaning his core part of his damage still gets buffed immensely. For a four star team, Ting Yun Aster has been his bread and butter since the moment he came out allowing for speed requirements for two Jingyuan turns, each Lightning Lord, to be easily met on top of all the buffs they already provide. The sustain Lynx's off-turn cleanse on ultimate will be the best option. 1.2 brought us Blade and Kafka, the unhinged one being first. Sorry, the unhinged man being first. Blade is a crit DPS, but it scales on HP% percent rather than attack percent. He has some minor attack percent scalings, but they're so weak that we'd rather have flat HP. This has changed up things since a lot of our buffers focused on attack percent at the time. His premier teams right now can either be a dual DPS team with Jing Liu and Ruan Mei, or a hyper carry team. His preferred hyper carry team will be Ruan Mei and Bronya, and Bronya can even go 134 speed, just behind a 135 blade, since he consumes very little skill points compared to most DPS. Ruan Mei is naturally his second best buffer, since she doesn't focus on attack percent at all, instead providing awesome damage percent and res pen buffs. E1 Black Swan is a fun dual DPS unit you can try too if you got her for Kafka. For a cheaper team and the one most have been running since his release, we opt for Pella over Ruan Mei since again she focuses on enemy defense shred over weak attack percent gains. For a 4 star team you'd run Lynx for sustain, abusing the aggro she provides, but then the Bronya replacement is tough. Your support options are Yukong, Tingyun, Guanifen, Hanya or Asta. Four of them provide big attack percent buffs and okay buffs otherwise. As the speed buffs can be nice for the team, and Gwenaifen provides vulnerability and can run the resolution light cone to synergize with Pella's defense shred. Though I don't know his best full 4 star team, but I can see it being between Asta and Gwenaifen for his third slot, or maybe a sub DPS. Kafka is our first 5 star non crit DPS, thank god, and she came out just after Blade. She focuses on attack percent with her damage over time effects, which cannot crit, and her detonations mean her damage also scales on speed. Her best team is Black Swan, Ruan Mei, and Huo Huo. Black Swan is our brand new dodge unit, and she is pretty insane, especially with Kafka. Ruan Mei is Ruan Mei, and Huo Huo is Huo Huo. The only problem in this team is skill point usage if you are skill spamming on Kafka and Black Swan. You'd have to drop some skills on Black Swan eventually, and if you don't want to do that, then I'd run the watcher instead with multiplication. For a mid-range team, she can replace Black Swan with any of the 4-star dot DPS. Sampo brings the highest damage in his element, but Luka is essential for physical weak, and Gwenaifin is universally the strongest if you're not against wind or physical. 
For the cheapest Capo team, you can either run Triple Dot with Gunaifen and Sampo, or Two Dot with Asta. Triple Dot ends up having higher damage, but is riskier over Asta's comfy speed buffs. 1.3 saw Imbibito Lune explode the DPS chance with a crazy idol on 2, if you were daring, lucky, or just rich. The problem he brought to Star Rail was his skill point consumption, consuming 3 skill points per turn if he wanted maximum damage output. However, despite that, his fastest scoring team is with Bronya and Ting Yun. Bronya can either run super fast and go basic into skill on a slow Lune, or she can be behind a fast Lune and he will basic into triple enhanced basic, or you combine both. Bronya could thus go fast, basic into skill, and Lune will basic into triple enhanced basic. There's a lot of things you can do. Tingyun's buffs are amazing, but since Lune generates special skill points with his ultimate, her ultimate cycling can help alleviate skill point needs as well. For Sustain, I definitely want to watch her to help even more with skill points. When we get Sparkle very soon, Lune will opt for her over Bronya and have way less skill point problems. For a mid-range team, you can go Hanya Tingyun, and for the cheapest team, you can replace Luwatcha. Hanya can also be Yukong, both work really nicely with him. 1.4 brought us Topaz and Jing Liu, a vibrant tax collector and a moody death collector. Topaz can be a hype guy, but she is also a fantastic follow-up attack support and sub DPS. So an amazing yet expensive team will be with Ratio and Silver Wolf. This will be completely shredding single target encounters with the high single target damage amping of Silver Wolf, as well as the pure single target focus of both hunt carries. If you have E1-S1 Topaz, you can even run Yuan Mei and still be fine on debuffs. Kushwan is a nice sustain for them too, providing big crit buffs. For a less expensive team, you can opt for the Qingyun Clara Jewel DPS team, but if we want to focus on Topaz instead, we can go for a high carry Topaz with Bronya and Qingyun. If you want to go even cheaper, then Asta can replace Bronya. And if we want to go Jewel DPS, then Harta can be a Jewel DPS option for the 4 star teams. I like running these two for example versus the Ebon Deer. Jing Liu is next, and she decided to have disgusting attack percent and crit rate buffs, as well as massive advance forwards into an enhanced state where she spews out damage. This led to saturation of attack percent and lack of crit needs, meaning a unit like Yukong would barely be buffing her damage. The fact she needs her state to pop off also means speed and advance forward was important for her too. So her best team right now will be a Bronya and Ruan Mei team. Ruan Mei ignores any saturated buffs and gives much needed damage percent, and Bronya's advance forward is essential for Jing Liu's enhanced state uptime. If you want to go cheaper, you can replace Ruami with Pella, which is still very comparable in strength. Due to Pella's E4 Ice Resistance Shred, her Defense Shred which can synergize with Jing Liu's signature, and her skill point positivity helping out Bronya. Even cheaper, we'll see you replacing Bronya with a speed buffer or Ting Yun. The speed buffer would allow you to cycle back to your enhanced state faster, but Ting Yun would do something similar in a different fashion allowing you to instead extend your enhanced state every time you get it. In 1.5 we got the Giga Chat Knight of Beauty Argenti with an insane 180 cost ultimate. This means just like with Jing Liu, we want him to be getting more turns than usual. In Argenti's case, it will be in order to generate his ultimate as fast as possible. So his best team in my experience is Bronya, Tingyun, and Huo Huo. Bronya's extra actions for Argenti means easy energy generation. Tingyun's ultimate means easy energy generation, and Huo Huo's ultimate, you get the point. Their buffs are also immense for him, as always. A cheap team can see you running Hanya over Bronya. The speed from Hanya is crazy, and they have physical element synergy with stuff like Planetary Rendezvous and the Penicony set. But the speed is very important, as just like Bronya's advances, it means he gets way more opportunities to strike. Dr. Ratio gifted himself to the whole world in the second half of 1.6, and is a follow-up DPS, meaning one-turn buffs aren't going to help as much compared to other DPS. At high investment, his ideal team will be E1-S1 Topaz, Ruan Mei, and Fu Xuan. If you don't have E1-S1 Topaz, then Silver Wolf will be replacing Ruan Mei and you'll still be deleting bosses. Not far behind in strength though, or even coming out ahead versus E0-S0 Topaz, is a cheap team with Silver Wolf and Ting Yun. Ting Yun's benediction is insane considering the amount of times Ratio will be attacking over the duration of a fight. Ratio also has a very high energy cost, and we will be band-aiding that with Ting Yun. He also self-buffs damage percent and crit a ton, so her attack percent buffs are actually pretty juicy. The cheapest team you can go would be Pala and Ting Yun, and this is also competitive in strength to 5-star options pre idolons You will need E4 Pala and Resolution on her, and then she will provide 3 debuffs for Ratio alone with a skill basic rotation. Now our final 5-star DPS is Black Swan, and we already got her best team on the Kafka bit. 
But for a mid-range team, you can replace Kafka with Sampo, provided he is at least E4, and ideally you'll have him E6. For an even cheaper team, you can replace Rame with Asta as usual. Black Swan won't gain as much benefit with 3-dot teams, unlike Kafka, due to the lack of universal detonation that Kafka provides for it. If you do want to go it, then Gwenaifen works, I guess. So I hope you enjoyed this new type of video, it was pretty fun making it and seeing how different DPS can be and their team restrictions. If you want to see more stuff like this, let me know with a like, sub and comment, and also let me know your favourite teams in Star Rail. Thanks to my awesome YouTube members, thanks for watching and have a good day.